Hi, this is Ruth from Animal Exchange, and we are going to be talking today about whether you can be smarter than your bird when it comes to food, because everybody would like to have their bird eating a more varied diet than most birds choose. So we're going to be talking today about things that are hot, high, and healthy. When you're a baby bird, and you are being fed by your mother, the food is hot. This may be a disaster, uh, because we're going to have a little bit of background noise here, because this is the noise that a baby bird makes to trigger its parents to feed it. And these guys are hungry, as you can see, and what I'm feeding them is monkey chow. And it's very hot because I've been soaking it in hot water for the last two minutes. And if they will settle down, they will fill up on monkey chow, and then they'll be a lot quieter for a little while. These babies are about seven weeks old, and the one on this side is a little bit older, probably by two or three days, than the one on this side. And the one that is making the most noise, of course, is the youngest, because he thinks he should be fed by everybody else. He has two other siblings, and both of them are a bit older, and every time he starts in with this begging behavior, they get so annoyed, and they want him to just go away. I would like him to just grow up and be a big bird and start eating different things. So what we do, in addition to starting him off on the hot monkey chow, because it can be served hot very nicely, or any one of your, your weaning diets that you can serve hot, the heat from the food is what triggers the bird's interest in eating it right away. They've been hand-fed with KT Exact hand feeding formula till now, and it is also served nice and warm. In fact, warmer than a baby bottle, because bird's body temperature is about 104 degrees, which is higher than ours is. And consequently, when it feels really hot to us, it feels just right to the bird. Now that first block of monkey chow that I pulled out has already cooled down a bit, so this one is a little hotter than we had in mind, but as it cools, just staying out in the air, he'll start eating more of it. The goal in getting your bird to eat a variety of things is to provide them with things that they will get excited about because they've either seen it when they were a baby or we have convinced them by our techniques of placement and temperature and color that this is something they can't resist. You may notice that two guys eating together do very, very well. They spend a lot of time pushing each other out of the way to get to the nice hot monkey chow so that they can feel the, fill their tummies. Um, their background noise may be a little bit much, but we're going to talk about what else we're going to offer these guys today. Initially, it has to be nice and hot. So let's see what will happen if I cut into my sweet potato that I just baked in the microwave. And we're going to take a little bit of this sweet potato, which is a different color, but let's see whether the fact that it's warm will get them to eat. It's interesting that the slightly older bird is going for it with great enthusiasm. The other one is like, oh no, feed me. And he's hoping the other bird will in fact feed him by regurgitating food. The sweet potato is a little cooler than the monkey chow was, and so that's not quite as appealing to the baby bird. So let's give him some more monkey chow in hopes that he'll be a little quieter. But you saw how nicely this older bird, and we're talking two or, four, two or three days, not very old, much older, went right away to the sweet potato, which is similar in texture and also nice and warm. Okay. Now we're doing better, guys. We're demonstrating very nicely for me. Thank you. We're going to be feeding them another selection of foods. And so let's put this in the bowl and see if he'll go down for that. And one of my favorite things to feed is kale. Kale is an extremely nutritious vegetable. And so even though these guys have been hand-fed till now, we've had kale in their cage. And if 
he gets done with a nice warm sweet potato, he's out to start cooking with the tail. Oh, he's going to go back for some more monkey jack, because getting the sweet potato is a little harder than it, he thought it was. I also have a hard-boiled egg, so let's try and see what they're going to say about a nice, warm, hard-boiled egg. Let's put this monkey chat over here and see if he will eat it from the bowl instead of from my hand, because when you hand feed a bird, they get quite patterned on your hand. And we're just going to take this whole hard-boiled egg and we're going to cut into it. And I'm delighted if they want to eat the shell because that's a good source of calcium. And this also is still warm. I just boiled it this morning a few minutes ago. Let's see whether our littlest guy is interested in it. Not very. But I'll bet you we can get this one to do some. And he says, yeah, that looks like good food. I'm going to try it. The color isn't offensive. And remember that color is important for these birds. They see color very well. Talk about hitting up your older siblings for some extra attention. Carrot is one of my favorites. Nice and good source of vitamin A. And I like to slice it really thin. And we'll show you how that goes into the cage more effectively later on. Oh, Big Bird is deciding enough of this nonsense. Would you like some carrot this morning? No, you're still fussing with your little sibling here. Uh, the other thing that we're going to slice is apple, and we're going to put these guys where the apple and the carrot are irresistible. And that place is going to be up high and between the bars on the cage so that they can get a good purchase on it. I sliced it really thin. Let's see what a big, big, big sibling will go for it. I'm not saying go to your sister. Because at this point, looking at these little birds, there's no way I can tell who's a boy and who's a girl. They're both little Lutinos, and so they don't have any secondary characteristics of, of uh, vocalization yet that's going to tell me who is which. Okay, you can sit over there if you'd like to. Actually, both of you can. Bye. When we decide what we're going to feed to our birds, I'm always happy when it's everything you eat, with one exception, and that's avocado. Even though we have wonderful pelleted diets, and I've brought some Harrison's bird food home to show you, uh, and that is a nicely pelleted little diet that I put in this bowl, uh, why we also like to have them eating everything that we eat. For one reason or another, avocado is toxic to birds, and so please don't feed guacamole to your, to your birds. The pelleted diets are not as appetizing to most birds as table food and or seed. And the first seed that I usually wean them onto is spray millet, because I can put that up high in the cage and they will get into it and play with it essentially first, and then all of a sudden they're eating it, and so they're now weaning from their baby formula. Let's get a cage and we're going to talk a bit about how and why we put our treats and our foods that we wish to encourage them to eat into the cage. Now when we have a cage that we're putting our bird in, how we place things in it makes a difference in how they're going to respond to eating it. We have two cups in the cage one for food and one for water. You may notice that both of these are down low. Birds like things that are up higher. So I'm going to put my regular food in one of the cups and I'm going to keep it down low. And if I'm really working hard to get my bird to eat something new, I'll even take the cup and put it on the floor of the cage, which is even lower. And that will encourage them to think about something up higher. The things I'm going to put in the cage I have different cups for. And you may notice they're different colors. A wonderful school project is to put the same food in both of these cups and see which one the bird chooses to eat from. It may choose to eat from the one that is closest to the perch, in which case I'll just reverse the color, the two cups later on and see whether it goes to the yellow cup instead of the pink cup when it's further away because Birds see very good color definition. They're, they're 
color vision is excellent, much better than yours and mine. And so if they decide they like what's in the yellow cup, they may always go to the yellow cup for food, in which case I'll start putting the new foods that I want them to eat in the yellow cup. Very easy to put my hard-boiled egg in the yellow cup. And all of a sudden, my bird is going to be patterned on yellow food in a yellow cup. If I choose to put the sweet potato in the pink cup, and you saw how nicely the older bird was taking the sweet potato, why, all of a sudden, he's going to like anything that goes into that pink cup. When I have something like kale, which is one of my all-time favorite foods to feed, I will usually tuck it between the bars. And it's very easy for the bird, once the kale is held in place like this, it's very easy for the bird to get to the kale to eat it. If I have a bird that's a real, I'm not going to eat it bird, my next step will be to put it on top of the cage because a bird doesn't want anything over him. He wants to be up high and he'd like to have a nice clear roof. All of a sudden he has this kale, he has to go up and pull it down and some of that gets eaten. Nice thin slice of carrot, that's one of the better things to feed them for the vitamin A and everything else. And again, you can wedge this between the bars. If I put that up high between the bars, my birds will eat it. If it's down on the floor, they may or may not. And I'll even take the little baby carrots that you get at the grocery store and screw them between the bars. It amazes me, even canaries will eat those, those little tiny carrots completely. You didn't think that they could do it. Cauliflower, broccoli, anything like that, again, wedge it between the bars so that they can get it. This cage is designed for a playpen top and so it's no problem for them to get out on top and have what they want to eat also. So in this cage with our baby birds ready to start eating everything, we've got cauliflower, kale, carrot, sweet potato, hard-boiled egg, and I'm going to put in pelleted food because pelleted food really is a good thing for you to be feeding your bird. I'm not going to put it down here, though, in the cup that's in the, the automatic holding place. I'm not going to put it on the floor. I'm actually going to put it in this cup, which is, of all things, shiny, and I'm going to put it up high. This little hanger is very convenient when you want to move it to a different location in a cage. So let's put our pelleted diet way up high. Bird can get his head in there, but he's also going to be playing with the mirror, seeing his reflection in the mirror, and get all excited about it. And then all of a sudden, there's that delicious food that he plays with with his beak. I have a device that I like a lot for both bathing and for food, and that's this really clever bird bath. And this bird bath goes in very easily. And I don't always just use it for a bath. I will often put my foods in it also so that they're up high. And that's again where my bird is going to go to play with stuff and eat it. So a wonderful way to get lots and lots of treats in front of your bird's face. Now, you may not want to have your cage quite so cluttered as I have this one, so I have some other alternative techniques for you to use. Number one, even though I never recommend mirrors, the one time when I will consider it is when I have a bird that's really a chronic bird when it comes to eating only one thing and nothing new. And if I take this cute little mirror cup and I put the mirror behind the food cup, Whatever I put in that food cup, the bird is going to try to eat. And he'll try to feed it to the other bird that he sees in the mirror. So that is the one thing that I will consider using a mirror for. Little clippets. They will hold the kale nice and tight if you don't want to be pushing it between the bars like I do. Or a slice of apple or a slice of carrot. All of those things can be easily held with a clip it. And again, while I don't like mirrors, if I want to have my bird going to a particular area in the cage for a particular item to eat, 
I hang the mirror in front of it and the bird will go to that. Of course, with a bell like that, cockatiels think bells are absolutely wonderful. They put their little heads up under the bell and they wear the bird bell hat very nicely. So we've talked a lot about the various diets that we encourage people, the birds to eat. Um, and it's the same thing that you're eating. It's people food. And these little guys will do a very nice job of eating a variety of things because they've been exposed to it early on. If your bird is not still a young baby like this, then you have to work a little harder. I was very pleased with how nicely the little, little older bird took uh, his sweet potato right away quick. They do go to things that are warm, as I said, and any time a bird is not feeling well, anything warm is the best thing. I had a wild-caught cockatoo many years ago before we stopped importation. And the very first thing I could get that bird to eat, other than sunflower seeds, was one morning I was having cream of wheat and I gave him a spoonful of cream of wheat hot. He was so happy he gurgled. And after that, he would eat anything he saw me eating. And that's another little trick. If you're eating it, the bird will eat it too. They understand what you're doing when you're putting something in your mouth. I admit I had to share my Egg McMuffin with my my bird at the house the other day simply because I had it in my hand and he thought that was just wonderful that I would hand hold something that I was eating and share it with him. So please remember whenever you have a bird, the more variety that you can encourage that bird to eat, the healthier and happier it's going to be, the more fun you're going to have with the bird, and in the long run I would hope that anyone would get far more longevity out of a bird that has a well varied diet than if it's just a little narrow-minded bird and all it's eating is the, the white proso millet out of their parakeet mix. Thank you so much for sharing our food treats with birds. We hope you will try something new and exciting with your bird, whether it is crab legs like my cockatoo used to love, or filet of sole, which he also thought was great. Uh, meat is fine, and anything that you can do to broaden the variety of foods that your birds are eating, this is a very good thing. So thank you from Ruth at Animal Exchange.